Hey everybody, welcome back to Jeff Bowles Central. I wanted to do a mental health discussion video for you. Uh, I haven't done one in, in like a week or two, so I thought I'd uh, get on here and do one. Uh, I wanted to talk today, I think it's actually maybe a little bit more pertinent uh, and a little bit more relevant than just sharing my experiences with mental illness. Uh, very briefly, I uh, have schizoaffective disorder bipolar type. Um, when I was younger, I also just suffered from major depression before I, I uh, developed this uh, schizo schizophrenia, schizoaffective disorder. Uh, you know, and that probably goes back to me being a teenager. So, I've I've been I've been handling this a long time. So, um, I probably have some perspective to offer people who are just kind of, um, let's say, uh, new to um, it, to having. Uh, depression or uh, bipolar or just anything really because uh, in recent years uh, you know if you watch the news or you pay attention to uh, public statistics or whatever it is uh, you may know that mental health is on the rise we have a kind of a mental health crisis in not just my country America uh, all over the world and a lot of that has to do with COVID um, people found that, um, you know, the COVID lockdowns that, that all, all these different countries participated in, it, it hurt people in a lot of ways, uh, mentally. I mean, far be it for me to say that it didn't help with the COVID. I'm not here to play pundit, but, uh, mentally, mentally health wise, especially people who are, um, alone, um, they felt very alone. And it seems to have kind of triggered some kind of response, some kind of mental health crisis. And so, even if you're not schizoaffective, even if you don't have something as serious as that, you may have a little depression, you may have a little bipolar, you might have something like that. And so I wanted to talk about um, basic, basically what you can do today to uh, help yourself out even just a little bit. Because the problem with depression, with mental illness, is that it takes over your mind in a way, your perception. For, for sure. It takes over uh, the way you see the world, uh, the way you see life, the way you see yourself. It becomes despairing uh, and it becomes hopeless sometimes. Um, and that's okay. Uh, that's just the nature of the beast. Uh, but look, this is, this is a thing where you have uh, two choices. I hate to put it like this, but it's kind of like a sink or swim. So you, you are, in my opinion, okay. Uh, cause I know a lot of people feel differently about this, but you are the victim of this thing, this thing. You did not ask for it. You did not go looking for it. You are not making it up. Okay. Don't let people guilt trip you about that or head trip you about it. It's real. You're experiencing it and you didn't go looking for it. But that doesn't mean that's where the story ends, okay? You have two choices. You can either try to get better and get back to being who you are supposed to be in this life. Functional. Well, uh, if you feel like a burden to others, maybe you could lessen that. Uh, I do. I feel like a burden a lot of the time. Um, you know... Uh, practical steps that you can take right now today to help yourself out uh, even just a little bit and and for me that starts with self-care self-care is the easiest thing to do uh, a lot of the time when we when we experience mental illness of any kind but the more serious it is the worse that this kind of factor becomes uh, you know um, making sure that you are taking care of your hygiene making sure that you're getting enough sleep yeah, making sure that you're eating enough, or if you're an overeater, like me, uh, making sure that you're not eating too much. Self-care, do the kind of things that your mom would have done for you when you were young. Yeah, treat yourself like uh, like you're your own kid a little bit, okay? I don't mean coddle yourself, that's not what I mean. I don't mean be weak about it, <laughs> which I hate that word weakness, because what is that anyway? Uh, I mean, take care of yourself like you're a loved one, like you would take care of your grandma, like you would take care of your own child. Take care of yourself a little bit, especially the sleep thing. 
Uh, I know especially for people with bipolar, um, mania makes it hard to sleep. And I know especially with depression, sometimes you get too much sleep and that's okay. Sometimes you have to sleep it off. But you want to try to achieve a good balance. You want to try to get a good night's rest if you can. Uh, hygiene is really, really important. I know that when I when I spent time in the um, mental health facility, after I'd had my, my psychosis um, about seven years ago, the thing that they made us do every single day was shower, uh, eat. They made sure we were sleeping. Okay, there's a reason for that. And that's because basic self-maintenance uh, can make you feel loads better, even if you're not feeling loads better, okay? At least physically. And of course, you know, your mentality, your mind, your body, it starts in a lot of ways with, your, with, with, with physicality, okay? The second thing you can do, um, and this is like, this is, you know, you have to book this. But try to try to uh, get some mental health if you help help mental health help if you can. A little bit of therapy goes a long way. Uh, seeing a doctor for medication if if that's right for you. I know it's not right for everybody. I know a lot of people are a lot really trepidatious about it. I know that it doesn't work for everybody. I know that sometimes it can make things worse. So I'm not a, I'm not a, a staunch advocate for medication. I just know that it works for me. Uh, I've been feeling better lately. That's because I've been taking my care of myself a little bit better. It's because I've been getting my medication regularly. Uh, it's because I've gotten some distance from the main kind of worst psychosis, psychotic um, expressions uh, of things. Um, you know, talk therapy has its uses. It's not totally useless. Uh, especially if you get a really, really good counselor or even just like an actual psychiatrist, like a really good PhD psychiatrist is like gold in your pocket a lot of the times or can be because, okay. So I had this, this thing happen in my comments thread, a few, a few, uh, a few of these mental health videos back. People were telling me that uh, mental health is primarily a, a spiritual thing, uh, and I don't I don't disagree. I don't agree uh, entirely because I think that even if it were completely a spiritual thing, uh, or just like a, a a soul thing or a um, a mind thing that is kind of a little bit esoteric or a little bit more. Uh, removed from the physicality of the life that we live. My dog's whining over there. <laughs> um, the thing is, is that even, even if, even if you want to go there with, with your version of treating yourself, and I'll get there in a second, cause I do want to talk about that a little bit. You still have to contend with the life that you have lived. And by that, I mean, uh, just just the life that you've lived, the traumas that you've suffered, the quirks of your own personality that have nothing to do whatsoever with anything but the life that you have lived. And that's what therapy can help you do. It can help you unravel that. Okay. And I also get I also get some comments sometimes in the kind of variety of this is all kind of um, you get the sense people. Some people think it's kind of nonsense that you should be able to take care of yourself that things like this, again, it's a weakness. It's not a weakness, okay? You wouldn't call someone who's suffering from, like, multiple sclerosis a weakness. It's a thing that they don't have any control over, but they can control getting treatment, yeah? Therapy, therapy, therapy. It could benefit everybody. Talking through your problems, talking through your traumas, talking through your history, talking through what happened to you last week. It's good. Not bad. Good. Not bad, okay? And then, you know, um, medication can go with that, uh, if that's beneficial to you. Okay. Now to talk about spirituality, I actually, it, uh, these comments that I received were under the assumption that people are under the assumption that I am just living in a materialist world, only interested in material solutions to mental health issues. It's not the case. Uh, I do have a spiritual side. I just, I feel as though I could address that here on the channel 
or I can be more practical and tell you what you can do to deal with the physical and mental manifestations of whatever this is for you. It's not impractical to seek uh, spiritual help if that's what you're into, but not everybody's into it anyway. And I just think that, that things like self-care, that's a basic. Things like therapy, to me, that's a basic if you're dealing with this. So I don't really care what, what it's irrelevant to me what, what spiritual track you are on or if you are on none. You could be a totally staunch atheist and still suffer from this and still need a solution that fits in for you, yeah? So that's why I don't go there with that, yeah? Even though I do have beliefs in that direction, okay? Um, so that's just kind of to cover that base. But you know what? They're not wrong. To me, they're not wrong. Uh, if you do have uh, any kind of spiritual proclivities, I, you know, again, it's relevant to me what those are. Uh, that's a basic facet of human nature, um, as is disbelief, which is, you know, not dissimilar if you think about it. That's still belief in something, which is that there's nothing, okay? Nothing other than the physical. Uh, if you're Christian, go to your church. If you're Catholic, go to your priest. Uh, if you're Muslim, go to your, go to your mosque. If you're Buddhist, meditate, okay? Do it if it makes you feel better better mentally and a lot of that stuff does but it's not for everybody and that's why i don't go there reiterating okay so um the third thing i want to talk about that you can do right now to help yourself right now uh and this is a little bit more abstract but again i think it's practical uh give yourself some patience give yourself some grace uh, and realize, and this is kind of a mental game, realize that if you're feeling down, try to realize, because it's very difficult. It is. It's really hard. Uh, when you're down, things seem down. Just like when you're up, things seem up. Okay? Because perception is reality. Uh, and so if you're perceiving the world in a negative way, everything's going to feel bad. And your life's going to seem useless. And you're going to seem bad and useless. Do yourself a, pay, a favor. Try to take a step back if you can, if that's possible for you. And if you're suffering right now, try this right now. Okay? This can help. Take a second. Don't tell yourself everything's fine if you don't feel that way. Tell yourself what I'm experiencing right now is actually a manifestation of something that is not uh, essential to me as my who I am okay if that makes sense I, I I hope that makes sense what I'm saying is is realize put, try to put a little distance between yourself like um, establish a bulwark okay <laughs> I play a lot of video games okay uh, a lot of strategy games but also a lot of war type uh, first person shooter type stuff uh, establish a defensive network that puts distance between you and your mental health, your mental illness, mental illness. Uh, if you can, a little mental framework about how, who I really am, who I really want to be, when I'm feeling well, it's my dog again, when I'm feeling well, when I'm feeling myself, that's the phrase we use. We say, how are you feeling today? Oh, I'm feeling better. I'm feeling myself. So you know that there's a self. There is a you that essentially diverges from the you that is suffering right now from, from depression, from schizophrenia, from whatever it is. In other words, it's not you. It's not. So, so if you could just kind of, just kind of tell yourself that challenge yourself that way. This isn't me. This doesn't have to be me. Okay. So that's, maybe less efficacious than things like self-care a little bit more abstract but it's also this uh if you can if you can establish that bulwark um and i know it's hard i know it's hard you may find down the road that the time the patience the grace that you gave yourself in those moments where you were establishing that bulwark, okay, 
brick for brick or sandbag for sandbag. Um, it might give you a little time. It might give you a little bit of space, a little bit of uh, openness to this. You might be able to breathe a little bit. And you might find that those moments of breathing, by the way, try breathing. Okay. That's also kind of a, a spiritual thing, breathing, prayer, whatever. Uh, if you can find that those moments of breathing, I mean, mental breathing, obviously also, <laughs> but if you can find that, uh, those moments of time become bigger moments of time, they accrue, uh, they gather, they become moments of stillness, moments of peace, moments of happiness, moments of just contentedness, moments of just like feeling less bad, less crappy. Okay. A hundred moments of less crappy is better than a hundred moments of seriously crappy. And those less crappy can become, become like content, can become happy, can become frustrated about life, but not overwhelmed by life. Okay. Give yourself some space is what I'm saying. Cause the, it'll build it's time. Give yourself time. The one factor that has helped me most in my mental health journey is giving is, is, is realizing that it's just, it takes time. I couldn't be perfect. I couldn't be who I needed to be all the time. I couldn't be happy all the time. I couldn't be not hallucinating all the time. I still can't. But the longer I've gone, the more I've realized it's just a matter of time sometimes getting better. Yeah. And not necessarily effort, but time, but effort, but time. And then the fourth thing I wanted to talk about that you can do right now, call a friend, call a loved one, call a family member, talk to somebody who's in your home who loves you. Even if things are a little contentious between you for whatever reason, but specifically, maybe, maybe they're not uh, responding to your mental illness the way that you would like, okay? Because maybe you're a mess or maybe they're a mess or whatever it is. I don't know, but try to establish or strengthen, try to strengthen first and then establish later, try to strengthen a relationship or two, okay? Because the other thing that helped me more than anything uh, on this journey um, was my family, was my wife, was my friends. Uh, and I lost some friends because of my psychosis. I've said that elsewhere. Uh, but I've gained a couple friends uh, just having this YouTube channel and talking about it, which has been absolutely wonderful. You can lean on the people in your life uh, a little bit. Uh, in fact, you'll, I think you'll find that if they really love you, they kind of they kind of don't mind, and maybe they want you to lean on them a little bit. You don't know, and that's a tough one. Not everybody has people. Some people are alone, uh, and I and I my heart goes out to those people for sure. If you do, if you've got a single friend in the world, lean on them a little bit. Um, uh, for support, if they're, if they can bear it, if they can bear the weight, if they can bear your weight, lean on them, family, mom, dad, siblings, lean on them, spouse, lean. Okay. Uh, girlfriend, boyfriend, lean if they can take it. And that's up to them. That's up to them to tell you, I think all this advice, everything I've just told you, everything I tell you every time I make one of these videos not based on empirical evidence necessarily, based on my own experience as someone who's been suffering a long time. But I think that's, um, it's what I have to offer. And I try my damnedest to give you the best information that I can give based on how I feel about these things at any given time. So those are the four things that I would say that you can do. Yeah. Uh, or was it five? <laughs> uh, Self-care, professional help, spiritual help, if you're into it, if you're, if you can connect with that, not everybody can, not everybody does, not everybody wants to, that's fine. And, uh, f f family, friends, lovers, whoever, just the good people, the important people, the special people in your life. Okay. Uh, it's not an exhaustive list. I'm sure there's other things I could think of as soon as I go uh, go over there to pet my puppy because she's uh, 
she's looking out the window forlorn, like, pay attention to me. Try doing some of those things. Just get enough sleep. Just take a shower. Just just talk to a friend. Uh, consider looking for counseling, even if it's online counseling, because a lot of people are feeling very isolated, very shut in, very much not wanting to go out there and do things. I know I am. There's online resources like there never was before uh, in this world because of because of isolation, because of COVID primarily, uh, and just because it's the age of the internet. Okay. That's all I got for you uh, for this mental health discussion. I hope it was informative. I hope it was helpful. Um, like and subscribe and share. Comment. Do 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 whatever you want to do with my videos. You can even you can even uh, download them, put them on a thumb drive, and burn it. <laughs> I don't care. Uh, just as long as uh, just as long as you're well, uh, as well as you can be. So. Uh, please stay tuned to this channel. There'll, there's more of this where it came from. There's also video game videos. There's also music. I, uh, I do some music. That's it. Talk to you next time. Uh, be well out there, okay? Bye-bye.